SEC showdown in Death Valley where number 11 Alabama faces number 15 LSU. A virtual elimination game when it comes to the CFP. The Crimson Tide are 8 and 12 in their last 10 meetings against the Tigers, but they're just 1 and 2 on the road this season. But here's Coach Kelly on what's different facing Bama QB Jalen Milrow this year. They've, they've had all spring and they've settled on a system with a starting quarterback. So it's consistency week in and week out. They're doing the same thing with him week in and week out. So you, there's a comfort level within the offense. When we got to him last year, you weren't really sure what you were going to get. It was a little bit of everything. And, and now there's a consistency within their offensive structure. And there's a comfort level in terms of what he's doing. Trevor, how do you slow down Milrow? You keep him in the pocket. Milro does everything well, some things exceptionally well. We've talked a lot about how great he is at the deep pass, about how great he is as a runner. So from a defensive standpoint, you can't let him have everything. You can't let him out of the pocket where he could run or throw and he can extend plays. You've got to keep him in the pocket and make him one-dimensional, even though that dimension is very good as a deep passer. The thing about LSU's defense is they do one thing exceptionally well. They are among the SEC's leader in sacks, but they are last in the SEC in interceptions. Mm -hmm. And so to keep Milrow in the pocket, they have to slow down the pass rush, which gives Milrow more time to torch that secondary, which hasn't been that effective. But the question I have for the LSU defense is, are they willing to be boring? Like, that's what you have to be. If you want to be dominant in this game, you have to be boring. What do I mean by that? I had a coach in college. Mac Brown would always say, consistently good to be great. LSU has not been consistent defensively. Their last game versus AM, they were dominant in the first half, plus 136 when it came to yardage. They were doing their jobs. Everyone was in the right gap at the right time. But then third quarter came and fourth quarter came. And not only did you see turnovers on the offensive side as well, but you saw the lack of discipline defensively. And so, are you willing to make the boring plays over and over and over again, or will you start to press? Will you start to try and get that interception? Or maybe, man, I'm tired of trying to keep Jalen Murrow in the pocket. Let me just rush up field and try and go make a play, and all of a sudden he escapes the pocket with his legs and runs or maybe makes a big play downfield. So are you willing to be boring if you're LSU? So let's talk about discipline. So, Trevor, that's been a big thing you've talked about when it comes to Alabama, how they've just not been disciplined. What do you need to see differently from them? They need to play cleaner. The thing about this LSU, especially on offense, LSU offense, is that if Bama misses assignments, if their technique isn't good, if their eyes aren't in the right place, they're in a lot of trouble because Garrett Nussmeyer, the LSU quarterback, is a future NFL guy, and he can find those mistakes. And they need to play cleaner when it comes to penalties because they are last in all of the power four in penalties committed per game. Bama commits more penalties per game than any other team in the power four conferences, all but four in the entire world of FBS football. And so these are things when you talk about items of discipline, unnecessary penalties like pre-snap and post-snap penalties, which they've had. When you talk about alignment assignment technique, these are things that Bama needs to clean up because if they don't, they are facing an opponent that can burn them for it. Georgia, an old Miss with a QB battle, but it's not what you think. We got Carson Beck and Jackson Dart, but they're coming off kind of night and day type performances. Beck is looking to rebound after a tough three interception game versus Florida. Well, Dart is looking to keep on rolling after dishing out six touchdowns and zero interceptions versus Arkansas. And here's Kirby discussing, discussing his quarterback's recent play. I just think first and foremost, he's done a tremendous job overcoming any mistakes he's had in the ability to go out and close things. There, there's a quality now that when you look across the NFL, you look across all sports, you look across the quarterback position, resiliency is a huge trait. And the one thing that this guy has done is when he's had to, he's gone out with his back against the wall and uh, made some throws. He's overcome some, 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 some bad throws earlier in the game. But, uh, you know, I think he continues to show that. I think that's a good thing. Now, I want to note something that as far as resiliency goes in the first half of games, Beck threw more interceptions than touchdowns versus the second half where he's thrown 11 touchdowns and just four interceptions. But Trevor, can you break it down for us? I can. You look at quarterback rating where 100 is perfect, 50 is average. Mm -hmm. When he's not under pressure, he has a QBR of 83. Really good. When he is under pressure, it drops to five worst in the SEC. The problem is the swings between the two. Mm -hmm. And so when it's easy, it's easy. When he's got protection, everything works like clockwork. Now, top of the screen, this will be his first progression to his left. 
And as he's looking over there, he sees that that guy is covered. So while that's happening, his second option in the middle of the field still has to run 10 yards before he makes his break. That's designed to come open later in the pass pattern so that by the time the quarterback gets there is the second option. Now he's ready for the ball. When there's no pressure, then Beck is in complete command of this. But now he's going to have late pressure. And as happens too often in this situation, he'll see a receiver but lose track of what the defense is doing. He thought this guy was open when he released the ball, but because the defense was already converging, turns out yeah, he's not quite so open. And now, Ole Miss leads the nation in sacks, and it's partly because of little things that they do. Here the little thing is step up before going inside. That holds the tackle's attention away from the real danger coming from behind. So the tackle is looking at that guy on the line. He can't even see the guy coming from behind until a beat too late to do anything about it. So it is sack, fumble, touchdown, Ole Miss. You know that Ole Miss, with 14 different guys having sacks this year, is going to come from every direction to try to force Beck into proving that he's improved his performance under pressure. Now, speaking of Ole Miss, Sam, on the other side, how does Ole Miss capitalize on Georgia's flaws? Well, they do exactly what we heard Trevor just say. They force Carson Beck into bad decisions where plays aren't open. So we're going to see Carson Beck right here in the middle of your screen. He's your quarterback, but I want you not to keep your eyes on Carson Beck. Keep your eyes on some of these defenders right here and watch where they go. So watch where they go as this play begins. Carson Beck is going to go through his progression. Notice where he's looking first. First, he's looking this way, right? And he's going to fast forward, boom. He looks in the middle of the field, right? But Carson Beck thinks this pass is going to be open. You say, okay, man, I'll be able to lo loop it right there. That's not what happens. Remember those two players keep your eyes on? Watch what happens if I could just have you just watch him and watch him as this play proceeds. Either one of those guys could have picked it off, and if not one of those guys, then the guy covering the receiver could have picked it off as well. So that's play number one, the mistake. But then we talk about some of that pressure in the decisions. This is going to be essentially a double move, right? A slant and a go, a sluggo. But it's not going to be open early. It's going to be open late. The only issue with it being open late is that I want you to keep your eyes on the sluggo, right? There's going to be not just one, not just two, but three defenders that are going to be available for this sluggo. So the play is not going to be open. It's going to be an interception, but I'm going to go back just a little bit because what's going to happen as well, if I can go back a little bit more, is that you're going to see pressure from the inside. Inside pressure, drop back, drop back. And so Carson Beck, it's not open. He gets hit. He gets pressured. Ball gets picked off by one of those dropping linebackers. And so, yes, you want to force Carson Beck into bad decisions, but more so you want to force him to throw the ball when he doesn't have to because he'll force it to the other team and what's crazy is on both sides we have Carson Beck who's coming off of his second straight three interception game while Jackson Dart has three interceptions total this season so it will be a QB battle but we'll see how that goes I might have a